Sydney Sweeney is it for now. History has given us an endless parade of it girls that choose some up and some pass through with grace, but you never remain it for long. In this video, we'll discuss the history and meaning of the it girl and see the impact of it girls on society. The term it girl comes from late 20th century British society. It usually is used to describe a young woman who is desirable and becomes part of the party scene and has some intangible quality beyond just physical attractiveness, but usually that plays a part in it too. It's an it quality, something that cannot be described. The first it girl we know by face is this one, Clara Bow. She starred in a movie called It, which pushed the concept further into the lexicon. It is based on the novel by Eleanor Glynn about an attractive poor girl who catches the eye of her shop owner boss. It's a romantic comedy from the silent era. And it launched Clara Bow to become the fantasy of every man and the ideal of every woman around. The author, uh, Eleanor Glynn, defines it as, with it, you win all men if you are a woman and all women if you are a man. It can be a quality of the mind as well as a physical attraction. Now this is where you have to step it back in time into the brain of a person living in a time before the motion picture image had been invented. We are inundated with the motion picture image it is part of our everyday life. We see TV screens everywhere. We carry one in our pocket. And, but for the, the people of the time, there was really no way to see the world moving other than to actually see that world with your own eyes. You can't have the it girl without a couple of inventions. First, we have, of course, the movie camera that we can thank Thomas Edison for, actually, William Kennedy Laurie Dixon, but Edison takes the credit. And the second invention is the close-up. The close-up changes everything. For the first time, we're taking these, you know, naturally aesthetically beautiful people. We're shining little reflective lights to catch the reflection in their eyes. We're lighting them with three-point lighting, and we're projecting their beautiful faces on screens 50 feet high. You are not supposed to be this up close to anyone's face unless you are about to kiss them. This does shit to people, okay? We're not built to see these images and the power of them can be overwhelming. The it girl transformed the way women are looked at, obsessed over. Men will do anything to be with them. Women will do anything to be like them. The screen is also an unfortunate mirror. As we stare at the beautiful person on the screen and we see an idealized version of ourselves, one the reality doesn't always match up to. When Clara Bow first hit movie screen, she became the obsession of all America. She was an infamous party girl and the inspiration for Betty Boop. She got 45,000 letters in one month. Women would copy her haircut. Men lusted after her. She became everybody's desire. Men stalked her, became obsessed with her. We weren't ready for this 50 foot high face. And Clara Bow wasn't ready for us either. The experience almost broke her and she retired by the time she was 28. She had a nervous breakdown and was fired by the studio. If you want to see a take on the life of Clara Bow in fiction form, check out Damien Chazelle's Babylon, which I believe is a little bit of an exaggeration, which is saying a lot because you got to exaggerate pretty hard to to uh, make Clara Bow's life feel unrealistic. Her real life was pretty crazy. She was a notorious party girl. She slept with all kinds of people, did all kinds of illegal substances. She was one of the reasons why Hollywood was seen as such an immoral place and the Hayes Code was originally invented. She was a pre-code actress, which means she was just a lot like Sydney Sweeney, known about as much for acting as she was known for taking off her top. Kind of unfair for Sydney Sweeney, who I think is actually very talented. But the problem of being it is it not only inspires obsession, it also inspires hatred, jealousy, and anger. Now, Sydney Sweeney is already facing the pressure of facing criticism for her relationships. Her family was criticized for someone wearing a MAGA hat at her mom's 50th birthday party. She's accused of ending relationships. She's called ugly. She's called untalented. She's scrutinized for basically everything she does. I think it's really important for people to see how words actually affect people. And I know everyone says, like, you can't read things and you shouldn't read things. But, like, I'm a fucking person. And this is the way it's always been for the It Girl. Since the beginning of cinema, this has been what the It Girls have to put up with. 
For Clara Bow, it was particularly awful. Rumors abounded about poor Clara. There were rumors that she had sex with animals. Rumors that she had sex with the entire USC football team. Fun fact, John Wayne was on that particular team, so rumors had it she slept with John Wayne. None of these were true, of course. Clara had a healthy appetite for sex, or maybe unhealthy, and she slept with men and women alike and did all kinds of illegal substances and partied like silent movie stars of the era did. She participated in all kinds of debauchery, but she didn't sleep with dogs or John Wayne. Anger seemed to be heaped onto the it girl for all kinds of reasons. It's like a tradition. Clara Bow said being a sex symbol is a hard load to carry, especially when one is tired and hurt and bewildered. And I think that proves to be true. Being the it girl has eaten some women alive. It, one could argue it destroyed Marilyn Monroe. It turned Lindsay Lohan into this Lindsay Lohan. Some rumor that Clara Bow's thick Brooklyn accent wasn't going to translate to sound film and that her career had to die in the silent era. But that isn't the case. It's that she couldn't handle Hollywood anymore. She had a nervous breakdown and quit acting by the time she was 28. She couldn't handle being the world's object of desire. Later on in life, she was diagnosed with schizophrenia, so we don't know how much of her breakdown was the fault of being the it girl and how much was the hard life she had lived combined with mental illness. She had lived a really hard life. Her father had molested her. She lived in abject poverty. Her mother, when finding out she was going to audition to become a movie star, tried to kill her with a knife, telling her, it would be better for you to die. Later on, both her mother and Clara would be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Being the it girl does seem to carry with it consequences as well as benefits. Some girls make it out okay. Sandra Bullock seems to have survived intact. So we can only hope that Sydney Sweeney can handle the pressure and make it to the other side. I mean, you're only it for so long after all. And then it's someone else's turn. So why do it girls get all the hate? Well, the hate that comes from men might be from the anger and bitterness from seeing something you want but can't have. The incel movement tells us a little bit about this. Incels have a whole system of Chads and Stacys and Beckys. The Chads being the men that women choose to be with and the Stacys are the desirable women. The perception is that they cannot get women at all, but for many of these men, this might not be true. Yeah, for some of them, they're not going to get any women. But with some, they might be able to get a woman, maybe not an it girl. And that translates to anger. Their unrealistic expectations of what a woman should look like makes them discard all women who don't match up. And for the girls, the hate might come from the part the it girl plays in the creating the impossible to live up to standards of beauty. It's sad because, I mean, they can't really help it. They just have it. This is the unfortunate side effects of the it girl on society. Clara Bow began the culture of judging women against others, and it isn't poor Clara's fault. But the unfortunate mirror of the it girl has consequences. Young girls getting plastic surgery, cultivating eating disorders, spending time and money on getting closer and closer to the impossible standards of beauty. It's a big burden to put on someone who is really just a normal girl, who happens to look like this. It could be why this generation seeks to distance themselves from the standards of beauty and create their own. I mean, it's admirable. I'm just not sure it works or can work. What is attraction based on anyway? Uh, is beauty in the eye of the beholder? I mean, I think to some extent, yes, but probably to more extent, no. There are objective qualities to beauty that actually can be measured. There are all kinds of theories on why someone is ideally attractive. And there's some science there, although science is ever-changing and maybe some of it's junk science. Now, there's a theory that wearing blush makes a woman more attractive because it looks like they just had an orgasm. There's a theory that cleavage is attractive because... It replicates the look of buttocks and uh, where you would normally be staring at the behind, now you stare at the front with the same amount of desire. We know that symmetrical faces are considered more attractive than asymmetrical. Some of it is about health, that beauty standards reflect what a healthy person looks like and therefore we select that person out of a desire to produce similarly healthy offspring. So it's not all arbitrary. Not all beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but some of this is learned behavior. In a 1951 study of 191 different cultures, anthropologists Clellan Ford and ethologist Frank Beach reported that 
Breasts were only considered sexually important to men in 13 of these cultures. And of these, nine of the cultures preferred large breasts. Two found long, pendulous breasts more attractive, and another two liked breasts that were upright and hemispherical, but not necessarily large. Some of this is going to differ from culture to culture, and some of it must be learned behavior. How do we get from Clara Bow as the standard of beauty, whom I think today would be considered a fairly normal looking woman, all the way up to Sydney Sweeney? I mean, it's not all biology. Beauty standards compound as one person is considered beautiful and then their features are replicated and amplified by the next until the standard grows and grows farther and farther away from what is natural or common. It's sort of a chicken and an egg situation. This is part of the hate thrust upon the it girl. It's jealousy and it's anger on the reinforcement of these impossible beauty standards. And the truth is, this is not really what Sydney Sweeney looks like every day. I mean, sometimes she looks like this. And well, some might see these beauty standards as only destructive. I think it's unfortunately more complex than that. I think it is okay for some people to be more beautiful than others. Hey, we all have gifts. I don't look like Brad Pitt and he doesn't have a YouTube channel? Eh. Seriously, some people have gifts that others don't have. It's just the way it is. Some people have won the genetic lottery. There have been video games recently that came out where they've lessened the beauty of the hero to make it more attractive to every type of person. And maybe that works for some, but for others it makes them less appealing. Now, does that mean we should go back to every video game woman having Lara Croft sized boobs? No, I think we can find a happy medium. Fantasy allows for idealization. We don't always want to see ourselves on screen. Sometimes we want an idealized version, and that's okay. There's pleasure to be had in idealization. But being okay does not mean this does not have consequences for society. I mean, imagine what it was like before Clara Bow, before the movie camera offered this mirror, when there was less ways to reinforce the standards of beauty, and the standards of beauty would be created by whatever is around you in your community, whatever is right in front of your eyes. But that is not where we live, is it? The movie image once projected on a 50-foot screen turned an ordinary girl into an impossible object of desire and changed the way we see women and sex and desire and beauty. And now that screen has been shrunken down and we carry it in our pockets, we stare at it all day, we can't escape it. It's now 100 years later. And we're so used to that 50 foot high face with the reflections in its eyes that we forget it's there. And the truth is, we're still not ready for it.